Good morning. Uh, my, my talk will be about uh, the next generation and top NG that uh, we have started to develop uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, at the end of this, uh, this session, okay, you will hear a little bit about uh, the project, what is it is about, but if you want to know more, okay, we'll be running a tutorial, a two-hour tutorial this afternoon in Aquariet room number two, that uh, it's here at uh, 3 p.m., so you can uh, you know, ask questions and ha have a more uh, detailed introduction. So what is Entop is doing? <clears throat> Entop uh, is, uh, is a small company uh, that uh, is, uh, is doing basically open source network traffic monitoring. We have started in 1998 with the first uh, original version of uh, Entop, uh, and we are now continuing uh, along that line. Uh, over the years, we had to face with uh, challenges such as high-speed uh, you packet know, uh, capture to, to analyze traffic. And then we have developed uh, other tools such as you know, high speed drivers for 140 and 100 gigabit uh, Intel net, uh, dri uh, kernel and uh, Intel cards. The packet inspection uh, open source library called NDPI and so on. So in essence, uh, we have created an ecosystem that is functional to, to monitoring network uh, at, uh, at a very high speed. Our approach to network monitoring is a little bit different from what uh, many vendors do. In essence, uh, uh, many years ago when we have started, uh, uh, network monitoring was very expensive. Uh, in a way, it is still expensive, but not that expensive as it used to be. And uh, what we wanted to do, we wanted to analyze traffic. We, we couldn't rely just on SNMP. So therefore, we have started to play with packets to analyze them and to see what was happening on our network to troubleshoot the network to understand what are the issues and how to improve it. We believe that without measuring traffic, we cannot really be sure that uh, what we have thought we implemented is really uh, happening in the network. So this is the, the whole idea. We don't want to be locked uh, by vendors, so we don't want to do anything like that. We want to you know, be independent from vendors, try to support you know, the standards like, uh, for instance, NetFlow, SFlow, IPFix, but at the same time be, be free to innovate without waiting vendors to implement uh, you know, information elements uh, in, their, uh, in their machines. Just to give you an overview of what we are doing, because we are here at the Open Source Working Group, uh, our tools are divided in two big uh, categories. Uh, the, the, the free one, like uh, EntopNG, and then we have uh, some, some commercial one that allows us to survive, because the main problem of uh, open source is that uh, many people are using the tools, but uh, not many are willing to support them. And uh, so we have uh, the feeling that uh, for many people, open source means uh, just free. They don't care about the source. People actually don't even use the source uh, most of the time. A very small portion of the community uh, you know, perceives the source as a value. So therefore, let's say we are providing people you know, free, free tools for, for the infrastructure. But unfortunately, this means that uh, most of the time, most we can expect is just, uh, just feedback or bug report that is still valuable, but at the same time it's a little bit poor because you know, support uh, uh, in terms of code contribution would be desirable. And at the same time, like I've said, uh, we cannot really survive with uh, pure open source tools because the donation we received uh, last year have been very neglectable, just to give you an example. So therefore, we have decided to, to create a premium version on top of uh, the, the open source tools such as, like I've said, for instance, this afternoon, we'll be introducing you to more traffic visibility tools, uh, you know, DDoS mitigation in software, something like that. But at the same time, we have decided that uh, because uh, we are coming from, from the, 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 the free internet community, we have to reward you know, the, the, the people of our group. So we are not uh, charging only for the commercial tool. So and top NG is another story because uh, it's, uh, it's free. Uh, anybody that is doing research, education, this type of things. So this is our way of doing that. So no donations, but we live on top of uh, our own uh, resources, thanks to those that are buy the, the commercial versions. In terms of coding, if you are interested, so everything uh, we do is on GitHub. Uh, GitHub was a decision we have made uh, last year because for years we have, we have used a um, private SVN. And uh, we thought that uh, GitHub was important not just because of GitHub per se, but because today, if you're not on GitHub, you basically don't exist, period. So you might like it or not, but this is the, the conclusion we have made. So therefore, we decided to go there. The transition was pretty smooth, and we believe that uh, it was a, a good move, okay? Also because we have other tools like Travis, for instance, that come for free for GitHub that are doing you know, continuous testing on our software, so the quality has improved. And also, the way GitHub works allows people to, to give us contribution. 
In particular, we receive uh, contributions for the deep packet inspection open source library that we'll go through uh, later, uh, more than with NTOPNG, because um, you know, network people, we have the, uh, the feeling is that they're using tools, but they don't really are interested in contributing because most of the time they're network administrators, so it's not part of the culture. Whereas those who, who use libraries, like uh, the DPI library, open source uh, called NDPI, instead are coding. So they're more interested in providing uh, even code or support for the protocols they're interested in. So back to, back to our topic, some history. In 1998, I started and top, the original one. Uh, as you can see from, uh, from the screen, it is uh, you know, a part of the history now. It was using something that was very uh, interesting in those days, but uh, that now is very outdated. For instance, this was the, the web GUI available on mobile, uh, mobile phones, so with WAP. And uh, at some point, you know, that is time to start over. It's to start over because you know, the world has changed, uh, you know, HTML is different, uh, you have JavaScript and many other things. So it was time to, to give a fresh uh, um, start to, to this project. Also because in terms of protocols, the protocols have changed. Uh, in those days, uh, DACnet, Apple Talk, and so on were still interesting protocols. These days, they, they disappeared. So we had to focus on different uh, aspects. So therefore, we wanted to create a new uh, software able to, to scale, first of all, uh, at least at 10 gigabit, to be uh, open to extension, to be scriptable, so that the users can, can use it to, to extend it, to, to, to fetch data from, from the application itself. Because NTOPNG has a web GUI, but this does not mean that you have to use it. You have to perceive it as a, as a server, okay? You put on your network, it is grabbing flows or uh, analyzing packets, and that's it. So it's a sort of database. And out of it, you can extract the data to create your own reports, or you can use the embedded web interface. So it's just a source of data, yet another source of data. And these days, fortunately, with, uh, with uh, JSON-like uh, uh, formats, okay, uh, it's a source, period. There's nothing magic in, in packets anymore. Whereas in the past, you know, there used to be the BGP expert, the NetFlow expert, and this expert. Okay? So now it's just data, pure data, that you have to integrate with your infrastructure. So if you have SNMP, NetFlow, other type of information, log, okay, everything can go into the same system. So what is NTOPNG doing? Okay, first of all, it's a tool for monitoring the quality of experience and the quality of service. This is very important. So it is designed for, for network, for, for, for companies, probably is a little bit borderline for, for RIPE, for, I mean, for people that are mostly interested in BGP uh, based yeah, yeah, uh, information, but uh, it gives you an idea of what is happening on your network in real time, okay? There is no delay, no, no average numbers like in NetFlow, nothing. Whatever happens, it happens in real time in the web interface. It has been designed from scratch, uh, uh, like I've said, the, based on the principle that the engine is uh, separated from the web interface. So the web interface is written in Lua, the engine is written in C++, and there is no way that the web interface can crash the engine because the, the engine must survive to attacks. Okay, this is a big, uh, important thing we have implemented. It must survive to, 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 to people that are clicking on the web GUI. So essentially, it's divided in two layers. <coughs> so the, the, the engine is in C++, the, the, the Lua uh, part, uh, allows you to render data on, on your screen and allows you to export data towards other systems. The monitoring engine has three main concepts. The interface, so NTOPNG can monitor multiple interfaces at the same time, where an interface, it is not just a physical interface from which you are receiving packets, but can also be a collector interface. So you can receive flows from, from the outside. Uh, you know, you have, uh, for instance, a NetFlow router. So this is an example of uh, a collector interface. Then you have the concept of host. So all the hosts that are on, on an interface can display <coughs> the information you know, and the flows that belong to that host, and of course, uh, the concept of flow. And TopNG divides the host in two different uh, categories, local and remote. Local means that uh, those hosts are important for us because they belong to our infrastructure. So it means that we want to keep the statistics for, for those hosts, mostly permanent statistics, okay? And we want to know more about them. Remote means that uh, there are hosts that do not belong to our uh, administrative domain that contact us. So let's say when we went to Facebook, we don't want to keep statistics on Facebook. We just want to keep statistics on our host going to Facebook. So this is the main distinction. And of course, because everything is dynamic, similar to what happens on a flow cache, and TopNG is implemented the same uh, you know, life cycle 
so basically, when a host is idle for a little bit of time, you know, it's purged from memory, and the same happens for flows. When it's purged, you know, this information is written on a, on a database if uh, you're interested. Like I've said before, in addition to, to, to pure you know, packet processing, we have created a, an open source library based on an existing, no longer maintained library called M, uh, OpenDPI for the packet inspection. Uh, some people are kind of scared of uh, you know, inspecting packet payload. Uh, we don't want to inspect those packets for, for spying people, but we want to do that for characterizing traffic. Okay? This is very important. Today you cannot really rely on port or protocol because you know, they are not really meaningful for, for many people. HTTP doesn't mean TCP port 80, at least this in, in our understanding. So therefore, we have decided that it was time to, to create a, a free and open DPI toolkit. But because this is, uh, is, is analyzing packet payload, open source here it is very important because you can inspect what's going on. You cannot simply assume that, uh, you know, devices made by, by companies that are looking at your traffic payload are really doing that, you know, properly, okay? At least this was our understanding. So therefore, NDPI, that is another library you can find on GitHub, uh, it's open source, GPL uh, version 3. We support all the modern protocols, not just the simple ones, but even the, 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 the complicated, the uh, always changing protocol, like, for instance, WhatsApp, uh, BitTorrent, Skype, and so on. And basically, it is able to characterize traffic and report as limited metadata. When I say limited, I mean what it is meaningful for network monitoring. So, for instance, if you have SSL, it gives us the SSL host, uh, uh, host name, okay, part of the certificate. Or if you have BitTorrent, it gives us the hash so that you can figure out what type of uh, activities that people are doing. But uh, it is not designed at all for extracting metadata like uh, email source, a destination, so it's not at all for, for lawful interception or this kind of tools. It is used only for traffic visibility, to characterize traffic. And as you can see in NTOPNG, we have this user interface that is displaying traffic in real time. If you come this afternoon, you will see that live. And uh, it allows people to, to, to scroll, okay, dynamically to see, for instance, the top talkers, to see what type of real protocols they have done, okay, what type of activities these people are carrying on that are usually not uh, possible with standard NetFlow tools unless you have augmented flows, so flows that contain extra information. As you can see, we have historical support. We, we store a historical data optional feature to MySQL or to Elasticsearch, just to give an example, or we can send that out to Kafka, to you know, Hadoop, for instance, just to give you an idea. And everything you see here is, is doable from uh, the, the, the web interface. As you can see, on top it is able to extract pickups. So if you have, for specific hosts, the need to save pickups, uh, you can click on the web interface, and then using the, the, this button, you can extract the pickup belonging to the flow that you have seen. Uh, in the NTOPNG dashboard, you will see me top hosts, top activities, and everything you see is an hyperlink. So clicking on a host, on a flow, allows you to drill down to see extra information. So for instance, this is an example of a flow. As you can see here on the flow, you, do, you don't see just bytes and packets, but you're able for instance to characterize the network latency or the application latency, so how the application is reacting to, to people's requests. You can see, for instance, the intra-packet delay for, for learning about flows that are, are, are idle. So that means that might be uh, you know, a, a kind of attack or this type of uh, activities happening on your network. And the same for, for host view. The host, we characterize all the traffic of our host into a single consistent view. We have the ability of uh, looking at historical traffic. If you start in TopNG saying, OK, save historical data to, to a database, you can see uh, what's happening. You can drill down. OK, I can see, for instance, top talkers, top flows, you know, Anything you're interested in, uh, it should be really possible. So just to conclude, <clears throat> if you're interested in testing our tool, you have two options. One is to uh, get the code uh, on GitHub. You download it, you compile it yourself. Another option is to use a binary package. Okay, uh, said that NTOPNG is part of uh, some Linux distribution like uh, Ubuntu or Debian, for instance. It is also possible for you to, to b use our packages that we are building uh, every night uh, packages.ntop.org, so you can download them and simply uh, install them with uh, Yum or with apt-get. So these are the latest things. And instead, if you are using Docker, okay, Docker has the, the ability uh, okay, of running software in a very simple way, so we also provide a container that you can use for that. So, like I've said at the beginning, if you are interested this afternoon, we are running a two-hour session in, uh, in the Akbari 2 room that is, uh, is over there. 
uh, if you want to see what's happening, if you want to help us discussing the roadmap and providing feedback for future work items, you're really welcome. Uh, we invite you to be there this afternoon. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Luca. Are there any questions? Yeah, I see. Please don't forget to state your name and affiliation. Uh, Alex Soriano, I'm speaking for me. Uh, do, do you support ER span? Uh, so you mean that uh, we receive encapsulated packets? Over GRE. Uh, I think uh, uh, we support that on the probe, not on top NG. If this is interesting, we can definitely support that because we have to backport the code. Yeah, it's a simple addition. Well, I, I think it's, it's a very important case. Okay, can, can you open an issue on GitHub so we can do that? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hello, Costa Sorbadello, Sote. Hi, Luca. Hi. I'm familiar with your work many, many years ago, <laughs> that, I, that I think of it. Uh, my main question is, uh, from what I understand, for the low-level stuff, uh, you bypass somehow the kernel and you process packets in user space. The, with the so-called PF ring uh, infrastructure of yours. Yeah. Uh, the first is, uh, do you, are you dependent in some sort of driver? Do you utilize any network card? And uh, what kind of uh, performance, packets per second or bandwidth, are you able to process currently? Okay, you have two options. One is the, just the kernel module that sits on top of Linux that can give you the ability of analyzing a couple of million packets per second, okay? Mm -hmm. And then if you want extreme speed, you have to use our modified drivers. We have uh, drivers for Intel cards, Intel. 1, 10, 40, and 100. So for instance, a couple of weeks ago, we have released the driver for the Intel 100G. And uh, it's very good because per queue, so you can visualize the, the card, you can handle 60 million packets per second capturing. So you can have multiple queue, you can really scale up. The point is that NTOPNG is able for interface to handle about four to five million packets per second because we are keeping flows and packets. But we, we know people that are sending us S flows or net flow that are able to handle 100 gigabit, especially for internet exchange points. So it really depends if you are pre-processing traffic somewhere or if you want to process everything inside NTOPNG. Okay, we will catch up later as well. Yeah, sure. Uh, Philippe from NetAssist. I have a question about uh, the uh, structure of NTOPNG, uh, how it works with uh, uh, multi-core systems and uh, how it scales on the cores and uh, how it scales horizontally. Yeah, in essence, in NTOPNG, we have one interface, one core, okay? So it means that uh, you have to allocate one core per interface. If the interface is too fast, like a 40G, you have to virtualize it with RSS. So it means that uh, in NTOPNG, you create uh, one interface, uh, so one thread per interface, and then you have the concept of interface view that allows you to merge this, this, uh, those interfaces into one single one. So ideally, uh, NTOPNG is desi designed for 10 gigabit network unless you pre-process the traffic. So this is the way we scale. So we need to improve it a little. What do you mean? It, must, it may be done. Uh, I may help you in this. OK, let's talk about Thanks. that. Thank you. OK, no more questions? So thank you very much, Luca. Interesting thank presentation you. indeed. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, the next speaker is, is uh, co chair of this session, Martin Winter. You know, if, if you know Martin, he's he is always passionate to talk about testing of, of the open source routing implementation. Even very late night, he's ready for such talks. So I think he's really the best 